Hello! This is hello to you. And here's what I'm doing here. I'm making a, um, a handrail. I had some spare wood in the basement that was already uh, treated lumber. So uh, I decided I was going to use that instead of doing an iron railing or something like that. I had concrete steps put in and I had to... What, and what I'm doing here now is I'm measuring the posts. Okay, so I'm going to have three feet of post above the ground. And what you want to do is you want to have half the amount that's above the ground below the ground. So I'm, I'm, I cut the wood to four and a half feet. And here I was just marking a one and a half foot section and then the rest of the board. So this is one and a half feet and the rest of the board is three feet. So that when I dig my hole, I'll know where to line up the ground with this mark. And in the next video that happens here. So I'm digging the hole. So I already have one hole dug here, and it's pretty close to where I want it. So I'm going to dig the next hole here, you'll see. Um, I'm sure you guys don't want to see me digging a hole. But basically, um, I was talking to some friends about how to do it, and uh, the guys had an auger when they were doing the, uh, the jackhammering and stuff when they laid the concrete here. They did a really great job with the concrete. I have it all dirty here. But... Um, yeah, and they were like, well, what? You know, you should have told us we could have done that. Well, you know, it's too late. They already took the tool back. And then I said, oh, how about a post hole digger? And then somebody else was like, why don't you just use a spade? Which is what I ended up doing. But the really funny part about that story is that we're all talking in a group, and there's this one guy who's real quiet, and he's just kind of sitting there, and uh, he never really talks much. And his name's Mike, and Mike says, uh, hey, you know the best way to dig a hole? And we all kind of stop and look at Mike and was like, no. And he goes, have somebody else do it. <laughs> Which I thought was genius. But here I paid a lot of money to have this concrete step put in instead of doing it myself because I wanted it to look nice because it's on the front. And, you know, I left it to the experts. Uh, but this I decided I could handle myself. So that's what I'm showing you how to do basically 10 bucks I got this done because I already had the wood downstairs but anyway here I am I'm saving the soil because I'm going to throw it in my garden and uh, basically you just dig a hole and then as you get closer take the board out every once in a while and measure to see where you're at obviously I'm not down that far because there's the mark on the wood and I'm not even close so down 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 sometimes you got to get on your hands and knees and just dig it out and that's what we're doing there. So, yep, you dig your holes. You measure with the mark you made on the wood. So that's pretty close. And then, it's time for the next video. You get ready to pour your concrete. Well, first you set your posts in place. So, I had some rocks and some uh, broken uh, concrete left over. So, I basically, I took a rubber mallet and... Uh, Bang it from the top, kind of get it into the, the, the bottom of the hole where the clay, it's kind of clay soil there. So, and then throw the rocks in to kind of set them up. So uh, that's basically what I'm doing there. So now you can see that the post is staying vertical all by itself. So that's nice. And then basically I get it all set up. And of course, I realize that I thought I had a bag of concrete or cement mix in the basement and I didn't so I had to take my all perfectly lined up um, posts out and then I had to do it all over again but this time I did it and I used a little block of wood you can see I'm using this little 2 by 4 piece to kind of measure the distance away from the edge of the steps so I didn't actually use a tape measure I just kind of eyeballed it using the block of wood as a spacer because I knew it wasn't going to be absolutely perfect. You can see using the rubber mallet to, to bang it in there and then throwing the rocks in the hole to, um, to keep it lined up. So now it's all lined up and uh, you can see it's pretty true. So like I tried to show that there, it's, it's not too bad. This one's leaning a little bit, but, but it's pretty good. It's not, not terrible. So I go get a bag of concrete from the local hardware store and those guys at the local hardware store where I can walk, 
I didn't walk this 60 pound bags of concrete back to my house. However, they keep the concrete in the basement all the way in the back. And there's a garage door back there. They must unload it from the garage door. But that's not the way that you go out as a customer. You kind of lug it all the way back up the steps to the front counter. And, uh, you know, so anyway, that was my exercise for that, you know, for this day. So I got one 60-pound bag of Quickcrete at the local harvest store. is um, $5.35, I think. So anyway, I'm throwing the wood chips in there. The reason you do this, there's a couple of reasons. One, it, it, it keeps the post from moving around. But second, it also forms um, a kind of drainage. So... Um, <clears throat> so that the wood, so that the, the water, any water that gets in there can drain away from the wood so that it doesn't just sit there and try to rot the wood. Now, that's basically what I'm doing here is putting, the, you could use gravel. Um, I'm not, I didn't buy anything because I'm doing this on the cheap. So I wanted to use the materials that I had laying around. And um, that's what I did. Now, <clears throat> when you're mixing concrete, okay, obviously it's a very windy day. You know, I should have used uh, goggles, maybe some eye protection, maybe even like a mask so that I wasn't breathing this stuff in. The other thing is when you add your water. So basically when you mix this, you want to have a consistency. You know, you don't want it to be like putty, but you also kind of want it to be so that when you draw a line like this, the line doesn't just disappear. See what I'm saying? See how I'm drawing a line and the line kind of stays there? That's about the right consistency. That's about what you want. So, so that's how you mix concrete. Uh, if it's a little wet, it's a little wet. If it's a little dry, it's a little dry. It's not that. It's not an exact science. <clears throat> you don't have to measure. But, um, but basically, you want to take your trowel, draw a line. If the line stays there, it's pretty good. If, uh, if it's powdery, you know, you want to add a little more water. Um, <clears throat> so I got it to the point where I could pour it. You can see how well it pours here. And then I just basically scrape the rest out. Now don't make, I'm going to show you all my mistakes. <clears throat> don't make my mistake. Here I am talking to my neighbor. Um, I'm going to try to get the rest of this batch of concrete out. I did several batches <clears throat> with my hand. Now, I'm only using nitrile gloves at this point. So, while I'm digging this out, my gloves break, and I realize that I've got concrete now all over my hands and under my fingernails. Which isn't that big a deal, but when I <coughs> excuse me, do the second batch, you see i got my extra strength gloves on now. <coughs> that makes a big difference. Those are chemical gloves. They're really heavy duty. And what you can do with those is you can actually use those with Portland cement, which is the real poisonous stuff. You definitely don't want to inhale that. And there's my mom getting in the way of the camera. So here's the other mistake I made. So mix all this up. The other mistake I made was that I used this entire bag of concrete. And I think you can see this is my last, last batch here. These holes aren't quite filled, are they? They're not. They're only about half filled. So I'm just here to tell you that it takes more concrete than you think to fill a one and a half foot hole that's been dug with a spade. Now, if I had used um, the pole, um, uh, the, the hole diggers, the post diggers, if I had borrowed those or if I had bought a pair for 30 bucks at Harbor Freight or 60 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's, and then I probably would have used less concrete. So there's that. So think about that. If you're putting in a whole bunch of them, you'll save on concrete, but you're going to buy the special tool. So for me, a five pound bag of concrete as opposed to a 30 pound bag of crappy uh, post diggers, which I'm not sure would have worked or not, or borrowing my neighbors and risking breaking them because my neighbors got all this stuff, but I don't want to borrow his tools because what if I break them? Um, so here I go get another bag of concrete. This time I went to Home Depot to get the concrete, which I would recommend because it was like $3.55 for uh, concrete. It was almost half price. So get your cement concrete at Home Depot. 
Uh, so here I am mixing it up again, trying to show the camera. So we're going to fill in the rest of the holes here. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm filling them up, so I'm actually tamping down the tamping them down with like a finishing trowel because I want to make it look nice. I mean, why not? You know, I mean, these, this is my these are you know the front steps to the house, so you want to make it look good. And uh, once I get done with that, I was thinking I was going to use the uh, the dirt to pour over top of the cement after the cement had cured. And now I'm just using my hands to kind of like firm up the post here. Because what I want to do is I don't want it to necessarily be flat because I want, if there's going to be a heavy rain, I want the water to run off and away from the wood because the wood is the thing that's going to rot. So I'm trying to make a slope here. I don't know if you can see that or not. And, uh, and actually, a uh, tip that I read while I was in the hardware store trying to figure out which kind of concrete I was going to use. Here's the neighbor talking to me. I was like, well, you know, I was watching a video, and, and it was a Bob Vila video, of all things. And he said, after you're done with this, the concrete will dry, and it will separate from the wood. So what you can do is you can actually take, like, window or door caulking and, uh, and make a, a bead around this. So mine finished up, they set up pretty good. So it's not like there's a lot of water there, but I might actually do that. Because why not? I've got that stuff laying around. You can see here, it's actually, this is, this is still wet. Okay. Now here is a couple days later. And my girlfriend's handling the camera. So please, uh, if you get seasick, just close your eyes and listen for a second. I know when I was watching this on my big monitor here, I was getting seasick. So basically, I'm just using spreader clamps um, to attach the board and you'll notice I'm only resting the board on top of the two rails at this point. I'm going to attach them on the side though. There's a couple reasons for this. I'm sure you've seen other people's houses where they've had two rails like this and then they've they've kind of leaned them down on the top and they've put the the board on the top. So when you do that you're going to have to cut again and you're going to have to cut at the right angle in order to do that. And I did that previously the first time I put in a handrail. And honestly, it's a pain, you know, to try to get that angle just right. Uh, this is a much simpler method by doing it on the side. And uh, if you're like my family and you're not like the hugest people, you know, and it's mostly like the older ladies that are going to use this handrail when they come to visit, uh, you want to have something that they can get their hands around. So the, so the side of the board is going to be easier for them to grip than the width, you know, than the, the, the thickness of the board. So you want it to be a little more narrow. So basically, we got it set up here, and I'm just going to attach the top. And, uh, you know, it's a pretty good height for most people. Now here's another mistake I made. Uh, and I hope you don't. But, uh, you know, you figure, well, this is pretty simple. I'm just going to use a cordless drill and I'm going to drill some pilot holes and then I'm going to drive these screws through and here's where I'm going to drive through the screws through. So you could go either way. You could go in from this side or you could go in from this side. So I decided I was going to go in from this side, especially since it looks like this is this this board is split. So I'm going to go in from this side and uh, you know get the full the full um, that way if you're you're pushing down on this when you're if somebody's like falling or really leaning on it hard the full length of the nail is going to be is going to be in there so here i'm lining it up and i'm just going to like drill some pilot holes with my uh, cordless drill and actually that worked pretty well with the cordless so you'll notice that i did it offset okay i did it offset for two reasons the way i did this is because this way there's one grain of wood here going this way, there's one grain of wood going this way. So if it splits, the other, the other screw, okay, here, the other screw, if, there, if you get a split, it's only going to be split here. It's not going to be split. So if I did them like top bottom like this, there's a chance the split would cover both of the screws. So this way, there's a redundancy. You know what I'm saying? And also the same with here, because the, the grain's going up and down on the, on the post as well. So that's the reason you do that. So there's not as much stress on the one 
section of fiber in the wood, okay? You're distribu distributing the stress. So that's why this is done in an offset pattern. It's not for decorative purposes. That's pure physics right there. That's basically engineering. Okay, so she's holding it steady here. And here I'm doing the same thing. So basically you can see this length of wood right there and you can see this grain right here. So that's one intersection and then we'll do another one here which is a separate grain of wood and a separate grain going down as well on the post. Get it? All right, that's enough of that. So now I'm thinking, well, that went pretty well. I'm going to just use my cordless drill to... Uh, to drive this screw through the pilot hole. Well, two things. Number one, I didn't make the pilot hole thick enough. Number two, my cordless drill isn't strong enough to drive this screw all the way through here. It's just the battery, the torque, it's just not enough. So, I had to go get another tool. So, you know, this, pro you know, this is what happens. These projects take, there's always something, you know, there's always something. So here, actually, I thought I had the wrong bit I thought that was a different thing, and it is. But you can see, even though I got the right size bit, I'm still stripping this screw because there's just not enough power in this. And then I'm trying to do it by hand, and that's ridiculous because now I've already, yeah, can't do it. So I'm going back inside to the basement, and I'm coming out with this baby right here. And this is a drill that I actually you hook up. I hooked up to my... Um, extension cord. This one is powered and it actually has a manual chuck. You know, this is a heavy duty drill. So, you know, I'm putting the driver in there and then you have to take the actual man uh, manual chuck out of its holding place right here. You can see this is the first or second time I've used this drill. So, that's how you use a manual chuck, boys and girls. Let me show it to you one more time. So you tighten it by hand and then use the chuck to put it, you see, it goes in one of these holes and then the teeth grab and then you turn and it get, and that snugs, snugs the uh, tip of the drill to the bit. So now I'm going to plug this sucker in and we're going to finish driving this, uh, this screw, see? And that makes a very satisfying noise. Now, again, uh, messed up because I didn't lean in uh, while I was doing it. I thought that the drill and the bit were gonna, or I'm sorry, the screw were gonna do the work for me. Here I am leaning in now and driving it with a pulse. So, so I'm hitting the trigger with a pulse and trying not to strip that screw. Well, it's pretty well stripped at this point, but I'm not taking this thing apart anytime soon. So when I do the next one, I get a little bit better. And I drive that in there. Let's see if anybody, if, yeah, she comes around with the camera. And you can see I'm using a slow rotation now. I'm controlling the drill. I'm leaning in and using a little pulse here at the end so I can get that flush. That's not a really good one. We'll show you this one. I think it shows up a little bit better. Oh, it took so long there. Um, all right, snug that up. And now, here we go. I'm getting better at it. So in, guide it, hold it. Slow, controlled pulses towards the end until it snugs right up. And that one was perfect. And then one more. And then just one more. And now you've driven four screws and you've got a cross board. So you got your handrail, you got your posts. And you can see, look how this dried. There's not a lot of um, gap there, which is nice. And these things are really in there. So a foot and a half board underground, three feet up. And now your handrail is perfectly secure. And I think I did one more video just to like kind of show it off, take the clamps off. I'm showing my girlfriend how to take the clamps off of uh, this one. She had a little trouble. 
there's the release, but she was also holding the tensioner at the same time. That's a common mistake. Don't do that. Just hold the grip like that. Pull like that. Pull to push that in and spread it out. Um, if you need to know how to do that, put it in the comments below. I'll show you how to do that. And then there's the final product, and you can see I'm pushing that pretty good, and it's pretty t it's pretty much in there. And this is uh, about three days later because there was some rain. And you can see I've got the slope, so the water will slope out. Like I said, I'll probably put a bead of caulking in there and uh, prevent the water from going straight down the post. But, yep, there you go. That's a handrail. And that's a handrail that basically cost me... Well, the wood I had from an existing project uh, and uh, the, the concrete basically cost me less than $10. So I asked a contractor friend of mine how much he would have charged for this. And he said, well, how long did the project take you? And I said, well, you know, I didn't have to collect too many materials. But if I did, it would have taken probably about three hours. He said, well, I never did a job under three hours anyway. And I charged 65 bucks an hour. And, um, you know, material costs and all that stuff. So he said, basically, right around 500 bucks. So this would have been a five. If I had hired a contractor, he would charge me four to five hundred dollars. And I did it in about three hours uh, total, maybe a little bit more because of the, the delay between um, letting the post dry and everything. And uh, yeah, and about $10 worth of materials. So, you know, how can you beat that? So anyway, that's, that's one way. There are many ways, but that's one way to put in a handrail, a wooden handrail. And... Um, I think it looks pretty good. Now, for for decorative purposes, this is really sturdy. But for more sturdiness and for decorative purpose, I could put another one parallel to that. But then I'm afraid, like, my lawnmower won't be able to get underneath. So uh, I think I'm just going to leave this for now unless, uh, for some reason, I just don't like the way it looks. Now I'll add the other one. And, of course, I could stain or paint this if I feel like it. Uh, this one, you can see, was uh, the one I was talking about where the the board was put on its length like this but then I had to line it up and this one's starting to get wobbly so I'll probably have to cut these weeds back and uh, not weeds but rows of Sharon I guess they're weeds and then uh, pull this all up and redo it like this and I'll probably do that later this summer uh, so anyway if you have any questions about this project uh, please let me know uh, I showed you basically all the mistakes I made um, I had to make a couple trips to the hardware store of course um, if you have any questions about it, you know, let me know. I'll be happy to help you. And, uh, please, uh, subscribe. If I get enough subscribers, they'll start paying me for these videos. And then I can do more videos like that because I'll be able to, uh, focus more time on that because I'll be getting some income from this. Uh, that would really help me out in a great way. So, um, have a great day, guys. Make it a good one and good luck on all your home improvement projects. Um, it was great talking to you guys. Have a good one. Thanks.